Welcome to worship here at Faith. Thank you for joining us, whether it's in person or um, by watching the recording of this service today. Um, we thank you for uh, being here, and my name is Pastor Spouty, and I serve here as the pastor. Um, as you came in today, if you're uh, in person today, you were able to pick up, um, perhaps you picked up a connection card. and. I remember some of the purposes that we're using for these. Um, maybe you think they're good or, or not so good for, for our worship, but the, one of the purposes is to be able to update your information, contact information, um, for us to contact you if we need to. Also, um, to include a prayer request on the back if you'd like to have us pray for you in a worship service like this one. And also ways that you can... Um, help us to improve our worship service uh, too. So make use of those throughout the service um, when we do those. Also, I'm not wearing a mask right now. Uh, you know that, the, that pastors, when they're doing the presenting up front, the proclaiming of God's word, that um, they're exempt from the mask. When I am singing, however, I'll be wearing a mask um, to, to help with that. But, so that's the, the government mandate. I pray that, that you're comfortable with that too. Um, today's service is focusing on this thought, that the Christian seeks spiritual wealth. Whatever wealthy things we have in this world, they're not as great as the kingdom of heaven. That's the point of, of Jesus today, and that's what we'll hear in our lessons today, and we'll even hear about that in our sermon today. We'll continue our sermon series today as well. Our opening hymn today, if you'll uh, turn to page two, is What is the World to Me? And, and this, this hymn, it reminds us that Jesus is our highest treasure, greater than any earthly pleasure. Let's begin with our opening hymn today.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Your word, O oh Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness comes. Let us pray. O Lord, your ears are always open to the prayers of your humble servants who come to you in Jesus' name. Teach us always to ask according to your will that we may never fail to obtain the blessings you have promised through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson today, you can be seated for this. Today's first lesson is 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 12. And in this lesson, we see that Solomon could have asked for absolutely anything that he wanted from the Lord, but what did he ask for? He asked for wisdom to govern God's people. We read from 1 Kings chapter 3. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you've made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people too numerous to count or number, so, give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that, there will never, so that there will never be anyone like you or never have been anyone like you nor will there ever be. This is God's word. Our psalm today is Psalm 119b. And this short section of this long psalm 
It reminds us to, it, it leads us to pray with the psalmist. One of the verses in the second part of the psalm, turn my eyes away from worthless things, preserve my life according to your word. Let's now chant this psalm. second lesson today is Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 30. And one of the, the, the thoughts that comes to mind with this lesson is that as Christians, we seek spiritual wealth, and the gems of this spiritual wealth include predestination and justification and glorification that God has done for each of us. We read from Romans chapter 8, the Apostle Paul writes, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Our verse of the day is John chapter 6, verse 68. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Please stand for the words of the gospel. 
Today's Gospel is Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 52. And in this Gospel, Jesus tells a few earthly stories with heavenly meanings to share with us the message of the kingdom of heaven, which is greater than any other wealth that we have in this world. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw away, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for our hymn of the day today. The hymn of the day today is, My God Will Never Leave Me.
letter to the Romans, I say to all of you, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon is based on the second lesson that we read from today in God's Word, Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 30. I invite you to follow along or listen as I read these again. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Here ends the word of the Lord. Dear friends and brothers and sisters in Christ, a few weeks ago, I hopped in my vehicle and I drove up to Danbury, Wisconsin, two hours away for Camp Croy Bible Camp Week 2. And as I prepared for this trip, I needed to get some things done ahead of time at church. I had to pack my duffel bags. I also had to read up on what it takes to be a director for a week at the camp because the previous director wasn't able to do it, so I was the replacement director. (laughs) As I prepared for that, I am a detailed list kind of guy, so I wrote down on a list all the things that I need to do in order to get ready to go for a week at Camp Croy. So I did, and I actually, surprisingly, got everything checked off of that list. It was all done. But as I got in the car and I started to drive off to a week of camp, I wondered, did I remember everything that I was supposed to do before I left? Do you ever have that feeling when you leave to go to visit friends or family or when you go on a business trip? Do you ever feel like you don't maybe have everything done? It's a pretty natural feeling to have. That word done is in fact the word of the Christian faith that we're going to look at today in this sermon. As I was looking at this text throughout this week, I realized that all the truths of this text can be scripturally underneath this theme of done. So in your in your bulletin you might see it's a different word, but that's that's because as I looked into it a little bit more this week, that was the the word done was the one who that stood out to me. And there are a few things that we'll talk about this morning that are done for the Christian. And these are things that are Um, a message of the kingdom of heaven that is worth more than all other treasure in the world. This message, these little facets of the message of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the, the message of the gospel that we'll look at today are that there's three things that are done. Your predestination is done. Your justification, it's done. And the last one we'll look at is your glorification. It is done. So the Apostle Paul tells us that our predestination is done when he says, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he, his Son, might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Do you use the word predestined in your everyday conversations? I don't either. But the word we know means to, part, partly it means this. This is one part of what it means. To choose, to make a choice. That's closely related. The word cho- choose and predestine are, are closely related to each other, those words. That's why the Apostle Paul says that this, that he, he says this in Ephesians chapter 1. In him, that is, in Christ, we were also chosen, having been predestined. You see how those two words are closely related? 
we who have been predestined, we were chosen. And they, they mean kind of, kind of similar things, don't they? But that's not all it means to predestine. Not only to choose or to, to determine something beforehand, but it means to choose something. <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say, is to choose something beforehand. That's, that's the other aspect of this word predestine. Has somebody ever chosen you beforehand for something? Maybe it was a, a wedding um, cer- a ceremony or a wedding reception. They chose you to be a guest. Or maybe it was to um, be uh, one of the people that gets offered a new promotion at work. Maybe it was something else that you got chosen for. For me, it was to be chosen to serve this congregation Fourteen and a half months ago, to be put on that assignment list from Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary by the leaders in our church body who are praying earnestly from God for his guidance to give a call to these new seminary graduates, uh, a call, a divine call, and he chose, uh, my name was put on a list with 26 other young men and I was chosen beforehand to go to this congregation for the purpose of serving you and God. So what did God then predestine us for? What does he say in God's word today? He says, to be conformed, the purpose to be uh, for our predestination, the reason, what we were predestined for, is to be conformed to the image of God's Son. Now, what does that mean, to be conformed to the image of God's Son? Maybe you're thinking of some of those Bible passages that that tell us the answer. You think back to your confirmation days or your Bible basics days or your Bible study times, and you think that it is, it means this. God's Word says that to be conformed to the image of God's Son means to be like Jesus in true holiness and righteousness. The very things that Jesus was. So when you look at your life, do you agree that your life, by its works alone, are holy and righteous? Me either. I don't see that my life is holy and righteous. I see lots of imperfections in my life. You kids today, do you see imperfections in your life today too? Yeah, we all do. And we know that the only way that we can be holy and righteous is through Jesus, who was that? Who was holy and righteous? And through faith in Jesus, we indeed are holy and righteous. God calls us that in God's word. Do you see that your predestination to be conformed to the image of God's Son has been done. And that God also says to be conformed to the image of his Son that he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. God's word says in Colossians chapter 1, he, Jesus, is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. Jesus was the only holy and righteous person who by his life was worthy to rise from the dead, rise from the grave, be the first one to do that because of his life, be the first one to rise as the first holy and righteous person to live on this earth. He's just the firstborn though. You and I will follow him in his resurrection, right? That's good news. Good news that your predestination has been done. But that's not all that's done. Your justification is done too. Your justification is done as the Apostle Paul says this, those God predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. I'm going to talk about a a chain right now. And 
maybe you think of prison when you think of a chain. But what is a chain made up of? Links. And when you read this section of God's word, those God predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Do you see the link to the link going on here? Those God predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And it's linked. So you who have been predestined, you have been justified. You have been declared righteous. Now, to be declared righteous is something that, to be righteous on our own works is something that the Apostle Paul has talked up to this point in Romans as that's something that nobody can do. No one is righteous or good based on their works, based on the standards that God has for them to perfection. But if you continue reading up through chapter 3, you hear in chapter 3, verse 28, that's that we are justified, we are declared righteous by faith apart from the works of the law. Jesus plus nothing is how we become righteous before God. Through faith in Jesus, you have been justified. It's a true fact. And so it's done. As we look at these words of God today, I start to become more and more confident of my salvation from sin. I see that my predestination is done, and you do too. I see that my justification is done, and you do too. And finally, we're going to look at that your glorification is done. uh, The Apostle Paul said this, Those God justified, he also glorified. So one more link, right, to that gospel chain, if you will. Those he justified, remember that was the last word that was in the gospel chain, he also glorified. So you who have been justified, you've also been glorified. That's good news. But you might look at your life and not really agree with it. You know, I look at my life and I see that I don't have the blue eyes and the blonde hair that's apparently the, the desired hair color and the desired eye color. I'm not six feet tall. I don't have ripped six-pack of abs. I don't have all of this amazing things, right? I'm not a glorious person. In fact, there's other things, too, that about, about us that we could look at and we're not that glorious. So you might think to yourself, Is my glorification done? Understand that God's word here, God is looking from an eternal perspective, right? He's looking all the way from eternity before the world began when you were predestined. And he looks at you as one who is justified and he looks forward to the he, he looks at you now and he sees that you're glorified too. It's not fully revealed yet though. Remember earlier in the book of Romans how it said that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up into the present time? Do you see that around you? Do you see that this world is groaning because of sin? Just look at the, the things around us. We are groaning. We are suffering because of our sin. Do you ever skin your knee? Do you ever get sad or depressed? Do you ever feel guilty because of sins? Me too. And that just gets back to the fact that this world is suffering. This world is groaning. This world isn't seeing the full glory that will be revealed. But the book of Romans also says we are longing for that time when uh, this glory will be fully revealed. This glory that was won by Jesus for us and this 
this will happen. One day your glory will be fully revealed. God says you're glorified now, but he says that will fully be revealed in heaven. But maybe you see some faint aspects of glory right now. Just in the very fact that you have been cleansed of your sin, you may not think it looks like it, but you know that it's true. And you also uh, know that, that through faith in Jesus, you want to do things for God's glory. And those are fruits of faith. Those are things that a Christian produces doing things to God's glory alone. Or being a witness for Christ and doing so with the love that he has shown us. This unconditional love. Better than your parents' love. Better than your children's love. Better than your spouse's love. It's the love that God gives you through Jesus. These are all perhaps faint glimpses of the glory that will be revealed in us one day. The fact is that your glorification, it's done. And that's good news. So predestination and justification and glorification, these are three things that God has done for you. They're not all the things that God has done for you, but they're some of them. And they're all done. I want you to remember that. And maybe you write them down. Maybe you uh, even just write them down kind of like you would a to-do list. And next to each one, your predestination, your justification, and your <clears throat> glorification is done. Check mark, check mark, check mark. And that's good news. So when you look around you and you see all these struggles going on in your life, whatever they may be, results of sin, you know that God is working them all out together for good. Like the Apostle Paul says in the first verse of our text, because we have this promise, these promises that, that we are predestined, that we are justified, that we are glorified. God has done it all for us. Amen. Please stand. As you look forward maybe to chapter 16 of Romans, you'll hear this blessing from, the Lord, from, from God. To him who is able to establish you in accordance with the gospel, the message proclaimed about Jesus Christ, to the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue now as we confess our Christian faith as God's word has led us to believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, my dear friends. We'll take this time to fill out the connection card as we normally do.
I invite you to stand for the prayer of the church. Also, for this prayer of the church, at the end of each prayer, I will say, Lord, have mercy, and you're invited to say, hear our prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing the River Falls High School seniors to have their graduation day on July 17th. Though current circumstances required them to postpone their graduation day and have it in a different way probably than past years, we thank you for this opportunity that they had. Though these graduates may become more independent as they go away to colleges, technical schools, or perhaps jobs, we ask that you continue to guide them as their Heavenly Father. Lead them to love your word more than anything else in this world, since it is a treasure given freely for eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Dear King of Kings, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the gift of the government which you give for our benefit. Without the government, there would be much less justice in our nation, states, and towns. We do pray that your valuable word would work in the hearts of our government's officials and that it would rule their lives so that they would grow in their faith and even begin to trust in you if they have not already. Help us to do all that we can to share the good news of the kingdom of heaven with them. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, you watch over all creation and have your plan of salvation in your control. Thank you for guiding our country to this point through COVID-19, riots, and other turmoil. Forgive us when we begin to doubt that you are still seeing us through the struggles that we face in this life. Continue to watch over us and increase our faith in you by using the treasured message of the kingdom of heaven to do so in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Savior, healer of every disease and sickness, we thank you for granting recovery to John and Linda Rutherford, members of our congregation, after they contracted COVID-19. We are thankful that they are still with us to be an encouragement in the faith for us and others. We also thank you that they were able to protect themselves and to quarantine themselves during that time. We also ask that you would protect them in the future and that you would also be with those who are at Wellhaven Senior Living Apartments, those staff and residents, to keep them healthy. Savior, we also greatly thank you for another situation of health the Crean family that Michelle Crean's retina um, has reattached after being detached. We thank you for the sight that she has, and we also ask that you would help her macular degeneration to improve if possible. Mostly, we, give, we ask that the Crean family would find peace in you, knowing that you will provide for their every need. Lord, in your mercy. It is in the name of Jesus that we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn today. We'll sing verses 2 through 5 of this hymn, What God Ordains is Always Good.
please stand for prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Well, please be seated for our closing hymn today. We'll sing today verses 2 and 3 of this familiar hymn now that we've been singing for some Sundays here during our series of worship. And this will point us again, our focus to heaven, where we'll be with the saints in glory. What glory far exceeding All that I has yet perceived All his heart's for ages pleading Never that full joy conceived God has promised Christ prepares it There on high our welcome waits Every humble spirit shares it. Christ has passed the eternal gates. Life eternal, heaven rejoices. Jesus lives who once was dead. Shout with joy, O deathless voices. Child of God, lift up your head. Life eternal, oh, what wonders. Proud on faith, what joy unknown. When amid earth's closing thunders, saints shall stand before the throne. Get my mask off here. Well, blessings uh, to you this coming week as you walk with the Lord. A few announcements for you. Um, the preschool benefit uh, was so going to be in person like normal. Uh, that's how we usually have it. However, because of the situations in our country right now, we decided to not have the in-person fellowship ice cream social but to allow us to support that ministry through our general offerings by designating um, on our offerings to the preschool. Um, so you can continue to support that ministry uh, by, by doing that uh, through your offerings. Um, that's the primary way of, of supporting that um, with those monetary gifts uh, this, this year, this summer. Also, as you exit today, there will be um, those offering baskets there if you would like to place an offering there, along with your connection card, if you're able to fill one of those out. I want to give a warm welcome to our, um, any, anybody who's watching online today, and a warm welcome to you, inviting you to come back again to worship with us. Also to fill out a connection card if you haven't had the opportunity. 
And finally, uh, the Rutherford family will be with us again soon. Um, they would have been here with us today, but the reason that they're not is because of their schedules. So I uh, hope to see them back here again soon. I'd be happy to greet you um, from the back to the front today, and please stick around if you're able to help clean our worship space um, to, to disinfect like we usually do. Please stick around. Also, um, please stick around after and talk with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ outside today. Um, looks like we can do that. So, God's blessings to you all on this week. Thank you.